Even the science shows double the gains when you take it like this. What is up people, let's dive straight into the video. A full on vlog with today's topic being the most scientific way to take creatine to build muscle. So, for those who are unaware, creatine is a non-protein amino acid primarily found in skeletal muscle tissue of red meat and seafood. And you know what? To get the same amount of creatine as one teaspoon, yes, we did bring a teaspoon all the way from home. Harris et al. 1992 have shown that you have to eat 1.1 kilos of raw red meat. And that's exactly why we supplement with it, because realistically, who eats 1.1 kilos of red meat per day? And even if you did, cooking denatures it. Anyway, so supplementation is the way to go. Anyway, here we go, post-workout meal shopping. I think we are gonna go for two baguettes. And then we are in business, family. 90 cent for this whole 290 gram packet of chicken breast. Of course, we have to go for some trusty spinacho. And I'm probably gonna do the whole weekly haul for you later on in the video, so that'll do for now. So you know what that means, transition through the forehead. So yeah, for those who actually care, this is the one I use. So creatine, we have a mixed berry from bulk powders, of course, and then we have another one for apple and lime. By far the best two flavors. And yeah, another huge benefit of creatine is that it's dirt cheap, okay? To get the same amount of creatine in these two bags, you would literally have to pay hundreds worth of red meat or seafood, okay? So back to the science. According to Creator et al. 2017, in a normal diet that contains roughly one to two grams of creatine per day, muscle creatine stores are only about 60 to 80% saturated. Therefore, dietary supplementation of creatine serves to increase muscle creatine and fossil creatine by 20 to 40%, as you can see in the graph by whole Altman et al. 1996, where total creatine concentrations did actually in fact increase approximately 20% after six days of supplementation. So yeah, that is why we need to buy some creatine and not just eat a ton of red meat. And here we go, we are about to smash our chest. We are downing the pre-workout of the gods. Go click the link down below for bulk powders. Let's play a game. Every click is equal to an extra nanometer added to my legs. Go click it! <laughs> So yeah, now you're probably asking, Scott, what exactly does creatine do and how does it benefit you? Really, it benefits anyone partaking in any sport that really relies on like the anaerobic or the creatine phosphate uh, energy system. Not so much the aerobic energy system because in layman's terms, in these two systems, you rely heavily on creatine phosphate for energy, okay? So you can see in the graphs by Baker et al. 2010, the shorter and more intense the exercise is, the more the phosphagen system dominates, okay? With a larger use of creatine phosphate for energy. So what creatine supplementation basically allows us to do is maintain creatine phosphate levels higher, which allows us to regenerate ATP or energy faster, and thus that should equate to more energy or just reps uh, banged out like in the gym, okay? Which I'm hoping for during this workout. So here we go, we're about to smash our chest in three, two, one. What is up, family? We are finishing off a horrible Metcon with a two minute plank. Five seconds ago. Three, two, one. Yeah, buddy. There we go, full push workout done. Very good one, actually, and conditioning, and you already know, it is Stairmaster time. Oh, she's occupying my favorite one. Okay, here we go, we are on the center one, because if there's anyone that can take my favorite one, it's Katie, so here we go. We're gonna get 20 minutes. Do a sick transition for us. Boom, and there we go, 2020. Bish bash bosh. And for those who actually care, the full workout will be in the description box down below, but that is another day, finito. And here we go, change of plan post-workout. We have a juicy omelette frying up there. We have some oats in the microwave, so you know the deal. Bish bosh bosh, an omelette of peace with some proats. So yeah, super convenient because I do want to go somewhere now. But let's quickly go back to the creatine science because you're probably asking, Scott, does it really work? And if so, how much can I expect to gain? So yes, it does actually work. According to a review of like 300 studies by Crater et al. 2003, creatine is consistently shown to improve maximum strength and power by five to 15% compared to those who don't supplement with it. With Volek et al. 1997, showing even in advanced lifters with six years of training experience, creatine results in 30% more reps on a five by 10 max out bench press. And then when you translate all of these gains into actual gains, another review by Bufford et al. 2007 state that subjects taking creatine thus typically gain about twice as much body mass and or fat free mass compared to those just taking a placebo. So yes, it does work. Five to 15% extra gains and nearly double the lean body mass. Hella gains! But yeah, that's a post-workout meal. Gonna chow down on that. And then this is where I wanna go now. I've been waiting to bring you along with me. So yes, we have had another death in the family. Our trusty blender has broken. So you know what? Just like that, we are in the blender aisle in Curry's PC World. And this is a big decision, guys, because I do use this quite a lot. So we have these types, absolutely pathetic. I can already know. So auto IQ moving up now. I'm interested in a Nutri Bullet, but I have heard some weird things. I know the 600 series apparently isn't powerful enough. So when it comes to watts, 
you want to be looking for like a 1200 watt or a 1000 watt for like the ninja blender i don't know ninja for 100 or there's this one 150 for the nutribullet with 1200 this one's like 1700 that's a huge thing and this oh my god 240 okay that's definitely out of our budget i think guys i'm gonna go for this so 1200 this whole box like you get the whole setup you get like two shaker bottles like a thermos glass so yeah you'll find out whether we get it in three two one isn't life so exciting guys this is literally like the highlight of my whole year the 1200 series because we are serious about making our gains so here we go this is what's in the box thought i'd show you so we have the whole blender then we have two fresh blender bottles and then they probably pop in there and then we have the thermostat to be honest that probably pops in there we have what the blade here i think that just fits on all of those so all of those can probably go in there then we have two like shaker cups uh, to go on top if you want to bring it to work or whatever we have some nice manuals i don't really know what these are and then whatever an instruction manual so you know what it also does it even cooks up your baguettes for you not serious but yeah we're gonna read through the instructions probably test it out with like protein pancakes tomorrow or something like that but this is the next meal we have two baguettes then we have one chicken breast from little this morning and then we have some cheese and then an apple for some micronutrients and once again let's quickly go back to the creatine science because you're probably asking now scott what type is best you know there's so many different types out there but which one is best okay so according to buffered et al in that review again most of the forms of creatine out there on the market have been reported to be no better than the traditional creatine monohydrates in terms of increasing strength or performance with the exception of herda et al 2009 who did show polyethylene glycosylated creatine to have the same benefits as creatine monohydrate but with a smaller dose but usually more expensive therefore overall as per the guys over at examine.com creatine monohydrate is the best bang for buck form of creatine as the others tend to just carry higher price tags on the label that being said other forms may have benefits that aren't actually related to the creatine molecule itself but due to the solubility of it okay so if you struggle with stomach cramps when taking creatine then creatine citrate or like hydrochloride might be beneficial for you oh my god this is literally going to turn into the most 101 creatine video along with a whopper vlog because the next stop we need to go to is aldi the motherland numero say and we're finally going to show you what we pick up in this haul it's literally been like four videos <laughs> but yeah to be honest i am still liking aldi primarily because they have ice cream that is cheap, but nonetheless, I will show you what we pick up. Here we go, first item, some leeks, some salad tomatoes, a ton of sweet potatoes, and this never makes sense, guys. Each one is 69 cents, and they're clearly different sizes. Normally, you weigh them, so the key is just to go for the biggest one. Some bell peppers, mushrooms, celery, a big bag of penne pasta, some Mexican rice, and then some egg fried rice. One of the most difficult choices ever, but it still has to be some golden puffs some porridge oats a few tins of tuna in brine of course big ass packet of eggs a packet of these fat free yogurts so you have a vanilla and then a chocolate orange of course a precautionary packet of bagels some light low-fat cheese some staple poverty milky way bars some sugar-free squash super cheap diet coke some cocoa powder frozen strawberries some raspberry conserve how can you not forget the absolute poverty version of halo top this is by far the best flavor they never have them though so yeah cookie dough is the next best thing and there we go family that is the whole again all the meat is bought pretty much fresh but here we go we are at the checkout so transition through the forehead to this absolute feast so we have about 250 grams of the penne pasta then we have this whole bowl which is like a medley of some vegetables, some peeled tomatoes, some chickpeas in there. Then we have the second chicken breast frying up nicely in some paprika. So we're gonna serve this up a little bit differently now in that we may not be eating out of bowls the size of our head, but we're still eating out of casserole dishes the size of our head. Oh my days, I'm telling you, if you're struggling to get in carbs, pasta is the key. And then we have the oven preheated in there. So, you, oh no, how could I have forgotten? Cheese. It's the magic number. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna pop that in pretty much at the top like that. Not for long. Moments later. And then just like that, we have the final creation. Oh my God. Complete. Let's just appreciate a thing of beauty. Familia Italiana. As always, if you want to eat out of casserole dishes and bowls the size of your head, click the first link down below, sign up for coaching, and I will be very happy to try and implement this into your meal plan and create you an entire new workout split. But back to the science of creatine, because you're probably asking now, how much do I need to take? Do I need 100 grams, 50 grams, 2000 grams? 
Okay, so it sort of depends on if you're a noob or not, okay? If you are then a starting loading phase of roughly 20 grams per day for a week, seems to be enough to literally fully saturate muscle creatine levels. Again, as seen in the graph by Hultman et al. 1996, after which in order to maintain those levels, just a dose of two to five grams is required. Otherwise, levels will start to actually fall off to pre-supplementation levels within four to six weeks. Now, if you don't want to load, then another way you can do it, according to Creator et al. 2017, is that you just take three grams per day, but it'll likely take 28 days to start to reach full creatine saturation levels and actually start to experience the benefits of it. So overall, I would say an initial loading phase if you're a complete noob and then the maintenance phase of like three to five grams, maybe even more if you have a large amount of muscle mass thereafter, okay? Otherwise, you can do it super slow and just take three to five grams per day and reach full saturation levels by 28 days. So yeah, the choice is up to you. Anyway, for tonight, that's all the science finito and there will be other topics that I will go into tomorrow. But for now, I haven't been this excited for a meal for a while. Look at this bad boy. So I'm going to smash this down and check back in with you tomorrow morning. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Banging out the steps, keeping the circadian rhythm in check. And as per usual, the macro capper will be on the screen. You can probably guess what we had. Salted caramel giannis and the white chocolate cocoa pops, the absolute goat. But let's again, let's get back to the creatine science because you're probably asking now, Scott, when should I take it? Pre or post workout? Look, it's not that time dependent, but there is some evidence out there by Antonio and Ciccone, which you can see in the graph, who showed that consuming creatine immediately post workout is superior to pre workout when it comes to body composition and strength increases. Although the main goal is that you take that five grams per day to maintain saturation levels because there's a plethora of other evidence out there suggesting that you can still benefit from it regardless of taking pre or post workout. Boom! And this is exactly why you do not stroll into a shop after doing the weekly haul. I don't really need anything, but we still have to buy something because we have to keep little in business, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we are in, that's what she said, and we're about to smash our back, but let's move on to the next question you're probably asking. Scott, is creatine safe? Surely it's bad for your kidneys. Nope. Look, it is perfectly safe, okay? So according to Rawson 2018, after 25 years of research, clinical trials have not yet revealed any adverse effects of creatine supplementation, and the small number which have, have been confounded by pre-existing disease, concomitant medication, other supplement use, and or extreme unaccustomed exercise. Now, if there is one guaranteed side effect that you will experience with supplementation, it's gonna be weight gain, which according to Buffett et al. 2007, can be about one to two kilos in the first week of loading. But as you can see in the graph, by Bakur, I butchered that name, 2000, this is not fat, but instead it's increased intramuscular water retention as muscle creatine concentrations are associated with changes in intracellular osmotic pressure, thus resulting in movement of water into the cell, water retention, and weight gain. So yeah, it's not fat mass. For something that has no calories, it cannot physically cause you to gain fat when you start supplementing with it. So here we go, we're about to smash our back. Wish me luck. <sighs> A very, very good workout. And you already know, here we go. 20 minutes, press the button, three, two, one. And just like that, 2020, uh, 2021. Finito, bitch, bad bog. And you know what, I don't say this enough, but if you are still watching, then I really do appreciate you. But that's another day, finito. And we're keeping it real, attempt number 25, because this is literally the furthest away we have ever been. Yes, finally. And bitch, bosh, bosh, two anabolic bagels, one with some jam, one with some Cajun chicken, a nice little egg omelette mug cake there, and then some cantaloupe with some micronutrients. Of course, we have the Mickey Mouse bowl, and I finally feel at home in my black hoodie. Yesterday's blue hoodie was an absolute disaster, but anyway, let's get back to the science. You're probably asking now, Scott, are there responders and non-responders? If I take it, am I just going to swell up? Well, it depends, okay? So as per Harris et al. 1992, there is actually a large between-subject variability in muscle creatine uptake, with those already having high baseline levels levels of creatine showing lower muscle creatine uptake and vice versa. Therefore, as per Buffard et al again, those who have naturally lower creatine stores, such as those who eat little meat or fish, are more likely to experience muscle storage increases of 20 to 40% as opposed to those with already relatively high levels, only seeing increases of 10 to 20%. And in fact, Soyo Tu and Bell 2004 absolutely butchered, even confirmed this, showing that the main characteristics of responders are those who possess a biological profile of lowest initial creatine levels, greater percentage of type 2 fibers and greatest preload muscle fiber cross-sectional area and fat-free mass. So yeah, if you're a vegetarian with very little red meat in your diet already and take creatine, expect to blow up into the Michelin man with hella gains. If not, then you're probably only going to see small little benefits.
And we are back in the hermit room with the huge headphones doing a bit of coaching work. Link will be down below. But yes, another topic I did actually just research now, just to have, because I know you're probably going to ask, is can females take creatine? And yes, totally. Okay, so according to Branch 2003, there is no evidence in the literature to suggest an effect of gender following creatine supplementation. Okay, meaning that creatine can be just as effective for women as it is for men. But naturally, as women carry less muscle mass, your serving size will probably be smaller. So instead of five grams per day, maybe like two to three grams per day. So that's that. Gonna get back to doing a bit of work, and you know what's next? I can confirm the Nutri Bullet is amazing. Absolutely demolished all of the ingredients, and it's super handy. You got this so you can pour out your pancakes already. So we got a pan. There we go. Turn it on. Woo! Oh my god. <laughs> then we have some non stick cooking spray. Get the mix. Then we pour out our. Oh my god, it's nice and thick. Then we go for another one over here. And there's loads left in there. So there we go, two little mini pancakes. So from two pancakes to a big ass stack of them topped with some honey and some honey puffs on the side for some extra carbohydrates. Perfecto. And we are full on Disney mode with the goofy ball this time. But let's get back to the creatine size because you're asking, Scott, will it not cause hair loss? I don't want to go bald. Look. Calm down, okay, this all stems from one study by Van der Merwe in 2009 on rugby players which showed creatine to increase DHT levels by 40% during a three week loading phase, okay, and while DHT is often linked to hair loss, as per Bang 2004, the results may only be applicable to those with a predisposition to hair loss as they showed in their study that there is actually a significant genetic component of hair loss in the young male. That along with the fact that this all still stems from that one study which to date hasn't been replicated yet, so I wouldn't worry too much. So yeah, for the full recipe, the link will be down below, but I'm gonna heat them back up because realistically, as a YouTuber, you just sit there talking while your food goes cold. <laughs> Smash those down and check back in with you later on. Just because it's on my way home from finishing the steps, I already know there's one person watching this who is itching for it. So we're gonna pop it into the motherland. And you're probably asking, Scott, what are you talking about? Oh, -ho. you obviously don't follow me enough. We are talking about the little adventures. Do -do 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 Boom. <laughs> Oh god, here we go. First item on the list, a classical guitar, a drone, a beautiful design toaster, a gaming keyboard, some binoculars, a glow stick party set, a Dyson, except the cheap version, <laughs> the Rocky box set, a cat scratcher, a baby potty, and how can you not forget, a shiatsu neck massager, of course. As always, if you are that one person who was itching for this, please comment down below. But for now, I don't need anything, so let's go home. To yet another absolute feast, I told you we take eating out of bowls the size of our head very, very seriously on this channel. But yes, a nice burrito bowl of peas. We have Cajun chicken, some salami in there, a shitload of vegetables. Then we have four of these tortillas that we picked up from little earlier on. Perfetto! I mean it, family. I take this shit very, very seriously. But anyway, that's going to be the end of the video. There's a ton of information in this one, so hopefully you liked it. And what I'm going to do is just do a complete summary of the video with the references and everything on my website. There are other headings that I want to include like creatine and caffeine and creatine and carbohydrates mixing them together but overall this is the foundational creatine 101 evidence-based video so hopefully you enjoyed it if you did then don't forget to smash the like button subscribe to the channel hope you all have a good day and see you all in the next video Boop.